It's hacking time. Just kidding, it's way too hot. You start information gathering. And map is your friend. One port open, port 21. And a sneaky service. Hmm, VSFTPD. Let's search exploit that. Ah, yes. Backdoor command execution. And there's even a Metasploit module. Fire it up. Set parameters. Exploit. We're in. Done. That's been a good hack. What? Wait a second. You think that you're done? Nope, this is just the beginning. We all love the exploitation phase. We all love breaking into a system, finding vulnerabilities, finding exploits, and then executing those exploits on a system and then getting root. That's awesome. But is that all that there is to hacking? Is that all that we need to do? The answer is really no. That's only the first step. And truly, this is only the start of the fun. You know, we actually, as penetration testers, we want to give an accurate picture to our clients of what a hack will actually look like for them if they were compromised. We want to give them a picture of the risks and vulnerabilities that exist within their systems, not just on the outside on the perimeter, but also inside. Because a hacker is not just going to come in and just exploit a system and then move on. They're going to do more things. And that's what this video is all about. Enter the post-exploitation phase. Here we measure the damage that can be done. We measure the risks that exist for a client. We report what those risks and damages that could be done. If you don't know, I've been studying the EJPT, the Penetration Testing Student Certification by INE over the past few months. And this week I have been covering the post-exploitation phase of the certification. And boy, oh boy, it has been fun. I've really enjoyed this whole module of the course. It has taught me a lot about looking into systems, understanding that Hacking isn't simply about getting in, but it's about looking around, learning things about the system, and then figuring out how you can move around the system and, and kind of wreak havoc and cause damage within the system. But as ethical hackers, as penetration testers, people who are hired to help clients secure their stuff and actually figure out what's vulnerable, we need to figure out what a hacker can do. And so we need to put in our hacking caps on and attack a system and then perform some post I always get that wrong it's really annoying perform some post exploitation on our target now post exploitation is the final phase of a pen test during this phase we want to get an insider's perspective on the system or on the network so we want to understand who are the users who are the administrators we want to understand what kind of services are running uh, and we we perform a lot of enumeration we want to understand what this system is about how strong it is and then what kind of sensitive information we can gather from the system and we don't just want to figure out what's there but we also want to establish persistence and that means we need to make sure that we have back doors to be able to get back into the system uh, just in case things are patched or uh, firewalls are put up or people are alerted to our presence uh, through a certain avenue a certain exploit and so we wanna make sure that we can maintain persistence so we can continue our assessment. And we also wanna find password hashes. You know, they're vitally important. Most systems save passwords in hash format. And if we're lucky, maybe there's some sort of clear text password saved in memory that we can then get access to and use to be able to log in as a, as a higher user. And that's all about you know, privilege escalation. But gaining password hashes in this stage of a pen test is an important part of it all. But why do we perform post-exploitation? Why isn't exploitation enough? Why isn't that enough to prove to our clients that they need to work on their security? Well. Imagine with me for a second a bank heist movie. Think of all the parts of the movie. There's the team, there's the planning, there's the really cool planning montages, there's all the training, there's all the timing practice that they need to do, then they need to study the blueprints, they need to understand what the security guards are doing, what kind of security is, what kind of vault there is, all of this stuff. And eventually, there comes a point in the movie where they actually have to perform this heist. And so imagine this movie is moving forward and the plan is going perfectly. 
everyone is in position, all of the, the, the pieces are falling together, you've got the pr protagonist and he moves through and he gets to the vault and he finally, after a sweaty montage, the door swings open. And then the credits roll and absolutely nothing happens. But we probably wouldn't consider that a proper bank heist movie because there's one element missing. Where's the loot? Did they actually steal the stuff? Did they get away with the bank heist? Like that's the best part of the movie. There's all this planning, but if all that happens is that they get to the door and the door opens and then nothing, and then we really wouldn't call that a bank heist. And kind of in the same way, a penetration test without post-exploitation is kind of pointless. No bank heist person, no real cyber criminal is gonna break into a system and do nothing in there and leave no trace some maybe some ransomware or something they're gonna do something that's why process exploitation is important because we want to understand the mind of a hacker we want to understand the mind of a cyber criminal and replicate that so that our clients know this is the risk and it's all kind of comes down to risk and the risk for our clients is data that's the main thing. The biggest commodity in the world is data. And if data isn't being kept safe, then people are at risk. At the end of the day, we wanna understand what kind of risks are, are around and what kind of things we could access, that a hacker could access, and then be able to report that to a client so that they can fix that, so that they don't have to run the risk of losing their customer's data or their client's data. And we get to explore that which is exciting. In terms of the EJPT course, uh, this module has actually been really cool. I've really enjoyed this, not just because of the why of post-exploitation, but because it kind of confirmed a curiosity that I have with any of this kind of stuff. Whenever I do a box, whenever I'm practicing or, or finishing a lab, I really enjoy exploring. I love that after I can get flag, I can actually have a look at the system and see what kind of things are actually there. And I like exploring what this system is made of. What can I gain? Um, and before I actually did this module, I was doing a couple of boxes and I was trying to maintain persistence. That was one of the things that I wanted to do. And I was playing around with SSH keys and I kind of didn't know what I was doing. I kind of have a better idea now, which is good. I really appreciated the fact that we could actually go through this and that it confirmed my curiosity. That's kind of one of the takeaways of this video. I want to encourage you to be curious when you are practicing on boxes, whether that be on Hack the Box, Try Hack Me, or even on this course, be curious. Seek out what else may be on the system. Have a look, see if you can dab, dump some hashes, see if you can crack some hashes. Maybe look at some of the other services that are running on the system. Maybe look if, if there's any pseudo vulnerabilities on a Linux system, or if there's any misconfigured services or anything out of the ordinary that you may be able to exploit further or move further in. Really enumerate the system and understand what you're actually hacking. And that practice will make you better for when you're actually doing it for a customer or a client. So I wanna invite you to go further than the flags. Don't just get user, don't just get root. Have a look around the system, see what else you can find, see what other things are around. Maybe someone sprinkled something in there for, for fun and to reward the people who explore and have curiosity. You never know what you can find. Because at the end of the day, when we're practicing these things, we wanna make sure that we're actually emulating what we do on the, on the job for real. We wanna be able to emulate that rather than simply making it a game and only focusing on getting the user and root flags but actually going further and making it a penetration test for yourself. If you join me for the first time, this is part six of my hacking journey, learning to hack with the EJPT course. Please check out the rest of my videos linked right here in this playlist after you finish this one. And thank you for watching.